We're about to meet with the Sahara Rose, and I'm so excited because this video is all about how to find your purpose and turn it into your career. Sahara Rose is a renowned spiritual coach, a best-selling author, the host of one of the top spiritual podcasts in the world, and she created the Dharma Coaching Institute, which is the first certification program for soul purpose and spiritual life coaches. So today we're going to hear Sahara's powerful story, how she found her Dharma, her purpose, and how she turned it into an extremely successful career. I'm someone who used to have no idea what my purpose was, and I was completely lost. I kept praying and praying praying to God. I just want to know my purpose. Just tell me why I'm here. And now I finally feel like I figured that out and I'm actually doing it as my career. But I know that's not the case for everyone. So today we're actually going to meet one of my subscribers named Thamar, who recently quit her job as a nurse and is trying to find her purpose. Sahara is going to guide Thamar through a coaching session to see if we can figure out today what her purpose is and then give her some guidance on how to turn this into a career. And this belief has been holding you back from living your purpose until today, until right now. <laughs> there she is! Hi! Hello! Hello! So Hello. Good this is Chubby. Hi! I'm so excited for today. I'm so excited too! Yeah. We're gonna change someone's life! We are going to change someone's life. All right, so come on in. show us around. This is my office here where I record my podcasts. Yes. So here now you can actually see all my different books wow. and offerings. But I have my Oracle card deck, I have my journal. This is Idiot's Guide to Ayurveda, the first book. I feel like I'm in middle school again and I'm like trying to get You're to class. You're at the Scholastic Book Fair. What do you think has allowed your career to blossom so quickly? Like the true answer to what's my secret of success, do you want to know what it is? I work and twerk. I literally put this shit on my standing desk like this. And I am just standing here all day, like doing my meetings, and I am just back in that thing, uh, oh, work it oh, in, twerk oh, oh. it. This is great. <laughs> we should do a little workshop right now. Booty out. And we're gonna start to just bounce. As you bounce, let the butt cheeks hang loose. Here we go, at the top of the glass on a roll. How the fuck are you doing that? So they do this in many different cultures. A lot of people think, oh, twerking is sexual. First of all, what's wrong with sexual? That's our creation energy. That's how we're born. The yes. origins of this type of movement actually come from fertility dances. So it's how women would open up their hips to allow them to birth. As you step into this practice more of allowing more like shaking, that's gonna open you up to more flexibility in your mind and in your creativity. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna be really like perfecting the twerk. You're gonna be the next Cardi B. I also see now your newest book. Yes, Discover Your Dharma. Can you explain what your dharma is? So the word dharma is an ancient Vedic word that originally means your greater purpose. It's your energetic frequency. It's the big reason why you are here. And more than just what you do, it's why you do it and how you do it. So I know for myself, my biggest question was, what is my purpose? Do I have a purpose? How do I find one? And going through that journey is what led to me eventually writing Discover Your Dharma. I see also you have Deepak Chopra who wrote the foreword of your book. How did that happen? It's a kind of crazy story. Long story short, I went through my own health crisis. When I was 21 years old, my body began shutting down. No doctor would really sit with me long enough to understand what was wrong. And that's what brought me to Ayurveda. Ayurveda being the world's oldest health system and the sister science of yoga based on the mind-body connection. So through that process of healing myself through Ayurveda, moving to India, studying to become an Ayurvedic practitioner, I decided I wanted to write a book. I was rejected by 30 publishers and then I was hired to write the official Idiot's Guide to Ayurveda. Right before it came out, I was at a conference and they're like, here's our sponsor, Deepak Chopra. And something just came through me and was like, this is probably the only time in your life that you're gonna see this person. So you need to just walk up to him and just, just tell him how he's changed your life. So the crowd is leaving and I'm walking down, down the stairs onto the stage right next to him. And I'm like, hi, Dr. Chopra. I recently wrote this book, Idiot's Guide to Ayurveda, and I would love to send it to you. For whatever reason, he gave me his email. I sent him over the book. It was about to be printed in a few days, just with no expectation. I just wanted to send him my book. And this is where it gets kind of crazy. So I'm in New York City at that time and I'm crossing the street and I'm running late to a meeting. I'm eating while walking. There's like a million things going on and I hear a voice behind me, someone say, can someone help me cross the street? So I turn around and I see this homeless man. So I just go up to him, I'm like, sir, where are you going? And he's like, oh, I actually wanna go two blocks down into the subway. Like, can you put me into the subway? I'm like, 
Sure. You know, I'm already late to my meeting. Let me just go with the flow here. So I grab him by the arm and I still like remember his, his stench today. He was someone that most people would completely ignore. Turns out he was a refugee from Iraq. My parents fled from Iran. So we start like sharing about that, our shared experience. So I put him into the subway and the elevator is about to close. And I'm like, sir, by the way, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to teach at university. I'm a doctor of physics. I'm like, wow, doctor of physics, like walking away. Like, wow, that was a very humans of New York moment. I would have never guessed from that interaction. Walking away and I check my email and there's an email from Deepak Chopra the moment I let go of that man's hand. And then he's like, I read your book and I love the way that you modernized and shared Ayurveda and I would love to write the foreword of your book and have you on faculty of our team. And I was like, wait, what, what, what? Instantly my life has shifted. So I truly believe it was because something within me shifted and also because that homeless man, I believe he was an angel to show me that would you respect a man who's also a doctor of physics, but when he's homeless, when he's not moving you forward in your career, but he's actually holding you back, would you give him the same respect as you would someone who's like an acclaimed author like Deepak Chopra? And the fact that I said yes to that, I believe was a test to show, will you truly honor source in any way that it comes through? Wow. The synchronicities in that story and what needed to align for all of this to happen. That wisdom is all around you. It's just, are you noticing it? Well, I'm really excited to dive into this today. The concept of Dharma and how to align with your soul's mission. I want to hear more about your story, how you did that for yourself. And then we're going to help one of my subscribers do that. And I'm so excited. Like this is the best day ever. Yes. yes. So Take me back to the time when you did not know your purpose. I had graduated from college and everyone around me was like getting their job and taking on their career path. I wanted to bring at that time like health and wellness out into the world. So I had this knowing that I was here to do something greater, but I had no idea how it was going to happen. So my parents, they labeled me as you're confused, you're lost, you're supposed to get a normal stable job that you just don't hate. And that's what life is, like what do you expect? I was really torn because I had never seen anyone living their dharma. No woman in my family has ever worked before. You know, my grandma was in a child marriage. So I've come very, very far just in this lifetime. So I didn't know if following your dreams is like this fairy tale that they tell you when you're a kid and then you get older and it's supposed to be like, oh no, you aren't actually supposed to follow your dreams. At this time, I was experiencing a lot of confrontation with my family, especially my dad. And I remember this one specific fight with my dad. He said to me everything that I was always so afraid of hearing. He said, you're a complete loser, you're a failure, you're the scum of the earth, and I want nothing to do with you. For them, life was so much about survival. When mm -hmm. our lives are focused on survival, we can't think about self-actualization. Mm -hmm. I'm so blessed that I was able to be raised in a country where I didn't have to worry about war and revolution and political atrocities happening that I got to be able to think about my dharma and also because I had this opportunity, it's my responsibility. And all of a sudden I realized, well, I'm just gonna do what I actually want. So I bought a flight, I went back to India and I spent the next year there. It was just like, this is what's happening. I'm going to write a book about Ayurveda. I think it can be easy to fall into the guilt, like mm -hmm. realizing that not everybody has that on the mm -hmm. planet and there's a lot of suffering happening right now, but I don't think it does anything to stay in guilt. That does nothing. Mm -hmm. So how do you recommend people can make the best of whatever situation they're in? Our obstacles are really our soul's unique curriculum to help us embody our dharma. Don't look at those obstacles as, as I can't live my purpose because this thing is holding me back, but rather this thing, me going through it, is what is going to give me the strength that I need for me to actually be able to be a living example of what's possible. How do you turn your purpose into a career. I think there's such beauty in having that thing that you do for your living be the thing that makes you come alive. So I've created something called the Dharma Blueprint, which is a five part method that we'll be going through today. I've really created this system, which we'll go through that breaks down different categories and allow you to actually pinpoint towards something like a career project or role you can play that allows you to create a career living your purpose. We're going to show you that 
literally right now because we have one of my subscribers who I met at Unleashed this weekend from the Vibe Tribe. Her name is Lamar and she just quit her job because it was out of alignment. And she quit her job and is now really like on this path of discovery. So I'm really excited for you to really coach her through this and for us to document this process. Like this is amazing. Are you excited? Yes. Have you ever heard of me? Are you familiar with my work at all? Do you Sahara roses? I don't think so. No. Amazing. <laughs> she told me about you yesterday. I love it. This and is I'm the best. Just like, I feel bad. I'm like, no, I no, don't we think I remember her It's name, perfect but... because we want to show that this can work for anyone. We're yeah. just going to use the framework to, you know, really discover what you know, your soul came here to do. That's what we're doing. <laughs> I know. We're finding your soul's purpose right now. It's time to discover your soul's purpose. It's time to discover your soul's purpose. Wait, question, question. Yes. I'm just curious, what were you what were you doing for your job? I was a nurse. I went into nursing because I like helping people heal. Looking at how stuff works and stuff like that, I didn't really like like it. Didn't mm -hmm. align with me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was just like, eventually, I think my body was just rejecting everything. It was just like, no, this wow. isn't where yeah. you're supposed to be. I would love to hear, like dive deeper into your story yeah. through the process. So let's get right into yes. it. So welcome to this Dharma coaching session, Thamar. So I'm gonna be coaching you to remember your soul's purpose because the truth is you already know it. It's inside of you. It's not something we're gonna find or figure out, but rather there's just block. We're going to start with just releasing any energy that you may be holding onto through some breath work, some movement so you can open up your vessel and become a clear channel. So this is a breath work practice that I like to call goddess breath work. So what we're going to do is we're going to inhale in like, and you could kind of body roll forward like, and exhale out. <sighs> Letting go of anything you're holding on to, any nervousness, any oh. tension, any energy that is not needed in this space. Hold at the top, bring your shoulders to your neck, clench your fists, clench everything, clench, 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 and release. <sighs> Let it all go. I'm feeling that there is something here in your solar plexus. What stories are coming up for you around this? I think the, it's like the ancestors and the trauma. Mm -hmm. I think, <laughs> I think that's, um, a big thing that I feel. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Cry it out. It's actually releasing <laughs> energy. It's a good thing. It's been hard. I think uh, just being like Mexican American and like where my parents came from, being first generation here, I think we hear all the stories of like the struggle that our like families had to take to get us here. I think who I am or who I became was very based on like respecting them, respecting what they did for me. And so I always wanted to like respect them enough to like just say yes to the, everything they said for me to be. Mm -hmm. I became what they wanted me to be, yeah. but it's not like I always felt there was something there. Well, it's so divine that you're here. You know nothing about me, but this was my exact story. <laughs> that oh, I've been telling Sky right. today. I'm also a first generation American immigrant parents and mm -hmm. my whole, I felt so guilty mm -hmm. around doing anything for myself. And that's mm -hmm. not a way to live. And that's also not what they really want. Mm -hmm. They want us to be happy. They just don't know how. Mm -hmm. All they've seen is if you get a stable job, you'll make mm -hmm. money and you'll have security. So that's all I know. So that's what I want for you. Yeah. So we sit upon our ancestors' shoulders and they came here so we can step upon that and have better lives and dream bigger dreams than they could have ever imagined for themselves. Mm -hmm. I'd love to ask you, when it comes into stepping into your purpose, what's your biggest fear? I feel like it's mostly just like, can I do it? Can I actually go through it things? Am I capable enough to be in the rooms that I need to be in? If I'm in a room of people who I don't feel like I can communicate with and I say the wrong thing, that makes me uh, uneducated. That makes me uneducated. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If I say the wrong thing, that makes me uneducated. Is that true? 
Probably not. When you were a child, did anyone ever tell you you're dumb, you're stupid? I think I just felt that way a lot in school. Mm -hmm. Maybe again, just because of like that, my first language was Spanish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like slowly I started learning English, but then I always felt like either my writing or my reading wasn't as good as the rest of the mm -hmm. kids. And just in case they called me, I would be like reading the, <laughs> the thing in the front. So I would like practice reading before, yeah. like having to read out so loud. So you felt like I have to extra prepare just yeah. to keep up. Yeah. And, and how beautiful that that taught you to prepare and feel ready. There's a gift in that, but also there was a belief created then mm -hmm. that if I share and I open my mouth, I'm not gonna be prepared. Mm -hmm. People might laugh at me. I might not have the right thing to say. And this belief has been holding you back from living your purpose until today, until right now. Yeah. Until right now, woo! Until right now. <laughs> so now that we've identified some of the fears and the blocks, now we're gonna move forward with what your Dharma is and create an action plan through the Dharma blueprint. So I'm gonna be asking you different questions, you're gonna be taking a quiz, and then from there we'll be chatting around what you can actually put your energy towards to embody your dharma. How does that sound? That sounds good. I'm ready. <laughs> so welcome to my office. We're gonna be diving into the dharma blueprint. It essentially helps you understand where to focus your energy. So it's comprised of five different facets. The first is your dharma archetype. I already know what your dharma archetype is based off of what you've shared with me, but I want you to take the quiz to see how it reflects. So here are your results. You got the warrior and the nurturer. Let me tell you a little bit about each of them. So the nurturer is here to care and connect. Well, they wanna have deep conversations. They wanna hold space. But then the other archetype that you had was the warrior. So the warrior, I feel, is this energy that you're really wanting to step more into. You know, you want to protect people. I'm gonna guess that you are that fire for a lot of people. Is that accurate? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. I think uh, any family and friends that I have, like, I'm the one that like cares a lot about the environment and cares a lot about other people or, or like is always looking for ways to help like community. Mm -hmm. I love that and you have some of the teacher in you as well. That's like, I learned this thing and now I want to teach it to other people. So who are the types of people that you would love to help? Just people that feel lost, um, people that think that there's nothing for them. So the next circle is all about excitement. So you've spoken into what is exciting for you, which is helping people, especially people who feel defeated. What would you like to help them feel? That there's like beauty mm -hmm. in the world, like that there's love for them. That's beautiful. What are things that come easily to you that people compliment you on? Like all my friends and family, they're always just like, oh, like Damar's the one that gives advice. Like she's the one you go to for advice. And then the last circle are your obstacles. So what are some obstacles that you've overcome in your life? Well, a big one that I can think of is just, um, I was super shy. Like I did not talk at all. And you want to work with people who feel defeated. Was there a time in your life you felt defeated? Probably when I was in school, because I just felt like so not myself. Especially in high school, I'm just like, this isn't me, but I don't know what else to do except for this. So we've got everything in your Dharma blueprint. <laughs> Take this all in. This is you. This is who you are. This is what you overcome. This is what you're excited about. Do any career paths show up for you when you're thinking about this? I just keep seeing in my head like, like the coaching, the music, nature, meditation. Those could be something that I can like mm -hmm. put together maybe. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, you could coach people who have felt defeated, who have felt shy. What energies are showing up for you when you're thinking about yourself coaching people? A lot of light, I think. So and also like the sun came out right now, and like yeah, was shining on us. Like, it's like, you, know. <laughs> you have no idea this about me, but I have a spiritual life coaching institute and I'd okay. love to give you a full scholarship to it. <laughs> <laughs> no. That you can train the next six months and become a certified spiritual life coach. Oh <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> this is like the way the spirit works. Because I didn't know anything about you. You didn't know anything about me. Your dharma is literally to become a coach. I have a coaching institute. Like, what is happening here? This I'm so excited. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you. Oh my gosh.
Thank you. Yes, this is magic. This is manifestation. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what a day. Yes. How do you feel? I feel like there's going to be a lot of work ahead, but it's like exciting work finally. Well, I wanted to give you Discover Your Dharma, oh. which is your reading material okay. now that you're getting started at Dharma Coaching Institute. Yeah. And you're starting in just a couple of weeks. April yes. 4th is when DCI, Dharma Coaching Institute, starts. Sahara, you to talk about that more in case anybody out there is inspired by this video and is also interested. So we are the world's first and only school that trains not only spiritual life coaches, but also Dharma soul purpose coaches. So you'll actually learn how to utilize some of the frameworks that I've shared with you today and actually coach other people to remember their soul's purpose. Damar will be your classmate and there is <laughs> such an incredible community of heart-centered souls. So if you're feeling inspired to do this, if you're feeling that soul calling, then there's a link in the video description for you to sign up. This round is starting on April 4th, so you have a little bit of time to go and get your spot. And that's it for this episode of Skylight. This is our song. You're, you're gonna oh. find your purpose. You're you gonna find your purpose. Go. You found your purpose. Go, girl, go, go, go. And that's it for this episode of Skylight. The adventure continues. Time on our hands, yeah, yeah. Don't have to rush a thing, don't you know? Easy, let it come.